So welcome to this uh, session of the seminar, Elena Avalar. Um, we are excited and uh, honored to receive Günther Östmann uh, today. And let me briefly introduce uh, you, uh, Günther, for those who do not know him, most of, uh, most of you know him, actually. Uh, Günther Östmann is professor for the history of science at the Technical University of Berlin and is an expert in early modern astrology, among other things. But uh, it's known that whenever anybody needs to decipher a, a, an ancient horoscope or has a question of this kind, he would turn to, to Günther, who is actually the, the expert on this. Um, he's also recently conducted a project on transformations in nautical education and navigational practice in 19th century Germany. And last but not least, he is expert in astronomical instruments and astronomical clocks. And uh, one thing that counts here, and that certainly not many other experts in astronomical instruments can uh, say of themselves is he's a master clock and watchmaker uh, with at his disposal a well-equipped workshop and I think if we're lucky we will get a glimpse of that uh, today. Um, in his publications he has contrib contributed substantially to the history of astronomical clocks, astrolabes, and he's also produced a considerable number of biographies of early instrument makers. His latest book in English, uh, published by Brill, is about the astronomical clock of Strasbourg Cathedral, um, and it's become the standard reference uh, now of this uh, magnificent uh, early astronomical clock. And with that, uh, the floor is yours, Günther. Uh, you may try and share the screen. Thank you for your introduction, Samuel. I will now share my screen. Is it visible? Okay, very good. Yeah, this talk will be on the geoheliocentric world system of Nicolas, Nicolaus Ramaus Ursus and uh, its mechanical execution or rather reconstruction. Some biographical remarks first. Born in Dithmarschen in 1551, Nicolaus Reimers or Latinized Raimarus Ursus is one of the most controversial figures in the history of science. Coming from a low social level, he was supported by Heinrich Ranzau and worked for him as a surveyor from, from 1574 onwards. After stays in Kassel and Strasbourg, he finally made it to the imperial mathematician in Prague where Ursus stayed from 1591 until his death in 1600. In 1584, he met Tycho Brahe on the island of Wayne, and there and the and their two and the, their two the two weeks the two week stay resulted in disputes over the authorship of the geoheliocentric system. This was a compromise between the Ptolemaic and Copernican systems. Brahe complained to, land, to Landgrave Wilhelm IV of Hesse Castle and his mathematician Christoph Rothmann that Ursus had stolen the idea for his world system from him and made the accusation public in his correspondence, printed in 1596 the Epistolarum Astronomicarum Libri, with no sparing of disparaging and insulting remarks. Ursus paid him back and subjected Tycho to intemperate criticism. A man of low status competing against a member of the Danish high aristocracy was an unusual occurrence at the time. 
Osos replied to Brahe with an 80 page book printed in Prague a year later entitled De Astronomicis Hypothesibus Seri Systemati Mundana. And the controversy, which was fought with the utmost vehemence, it was more a question of honor than of priority. And Johannes Kepler was also drawn into it is well known and has often been treated from different perspectives. The world system conceived by Ramaros Osus, here is an illustration from his book, is an attempt to find a compromise solution between the systems of Ptolemy and Copernicus. Osus leaves the earth, which rotates on its, on its own axis in one day at the center of the world. The moon revolves around the earth. The other planets, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn around the sun, which in, in turn moves in a circular orbit around the earth, as can clearly be, be seen here. Orsus published his world system in 1588, but Tycho Brahe presented a very similar scheme in his book, De Mundi Eterei Recentioribus Phenomenis in the same year. Here is the illustration from Tycho's book. This scheme corresponds to that of Osus, but leaves the earth immobile in the central. Accordingly, the fixed star sphere performs one revolution per day, but the orbit of Mars intersects the orbit of the sun. Tycho accused, uh, accused Orsus, who had stayed with him on the Isle of Wain, as I've already said four years earlier, of plagiarizing his ideas and a, dis and a bitter dispute over priorities ensued. This dragged on for years. Orsus went to Kassel, where he, where he explained his system and dedicated his work, the Astronomicis Hypothesibus, to Moritz of Hesse Kassel, who was the successor of Land Landgrave Wilhelm IV. And he describes the event as follows, and I quote in English translation, when almost 12 years ago, in 1585, I conceived and worked out my new astronomical hypothesis, Justus Burgi, your highness's still serving instrument maker and clockmaker, highly important astronomer and geometer, who was also in my most reliable and by far the dearest teacher and instructor in astronomical matters, constructed them from brass. When he, that is Landgrave Wilhelm, saw that the hypothesis were represented in a model and correctly fulfilled their function in that first general, albeit still rough design, he was seized with the, high, with the highest admiration and deeply moved by all too great joy." End of quote. This model has not survived, but at least some technical information is available. In his Fundamentum Astronomicum, published in 1588, Ursus reproduced a diagram of the wheelwork with, with, the, with tooth numbers and dedicated it to the, Engle, to the English mathematician and mystic John Dee. The scheme is visible here. The comparison with the, with the orbital periods calculated according to Copernicus shows the following misalignments. Mercury advances by about two degrees per year. Venus lags behind by about 0.3 degree per year. Mars is correct. Jupiter advances about half a degree per year. And Saturn advances about 0.3 degree per year. So apart from Mercury, which is difficult to observe anyway because of its proximity to the sun, the misalignments of the model are quite small. 
There is a problem with the direction of rotation, however. The sense of, <clears throat> the sense of rotation of all planets is opposite to that of the sun. This is true in the model for the outer planets, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, but not for Venus and Mercury. However, since the revolutions of the two inner planets are only perceived from Earth as oscillating movements around the sun, this error is of little importance. But Christoph Rothmann drew attention to, the, to, this, to the error and Landgraf Wilhelm had then had Jost Burgi make to make an approved model, which is also not extant. In 2005, the Dittmarsche Landesmuseum in Meldorf commissioned a demonstration model of Ursus planetar Planetarium with a manually operated crank drive, which has been executed in my workshop. The first step was to calculate the gears and select the, the required cutters, taking into account the, the, the dimensions of the available mechanics lathe. Also, too great a spread of, of the modules, that is the, quo, the quotient of the pitch circle diameter and the number of teeth, was to be avoided. After some trial calculations, an engagement distance of 84.5 millimeters proved to be suitable. With four gears, however, the number of teeth had to be doubled. The transmission ratio thus remained the same, as otherwise extremely large modules with very, with very large tooth spaces would have occurred, resulting in too much play. I have no idea how this problem was tackled in the original. The gears with cycloid profile were cut according to Swiss to the Swiss standard NHS 56702, the ordinary standard for uh, for clock making or for clock makers, but with, with but with square bottoms. Six so-called crooked divisions. There are, there, are, uh, there are wheels of 183, 156, 133, 116, 83 and, and 73 could neither, neither be produced on the wheel cutting machine available in my workshop, nor with the dividing head of the mechanics lathe. Therefore, it was necessary to make a special dividing plate for this planetarium. You can see the procedure here. This was done by means of a CNC controlled rotary table on the milling machine. This dividing plate was attached to the main spindle of the lathe by means of an adapter. You can see the dividing plate on the left of the picture and an index lever was attached to the, to the side of the machine. In combination with the vertical super, support with milling spindle and primary reduction gearing, the device for wheel cutting was complete. Here you can see the entire architecture of the machine. In combination with special wheel holders for large diameters and and the great stability of the lathe, the low vibration cutting process produced very clean tooth flanks. Here's one of these wheel holders visible. That is the blanks are screwed between fixing plates, thus uh, preventing vibration. You can see an almost finish one of the larger wheels almost finished. A total of 1,218 teeth had to be cut. After finishing the wheels, the thin wall tubes for fixing the five planets on the support arms were made. You can see these tubes here. Separately and here 
put together. These were all the more difficult to fix or to span the machine as their diameter increased with decreasing length. So special mandrels had to be made first to machine these, those, those parts. The work frame, on the other hand, here are the three base plates. These plates were easier to machine. The edges of the three movement plates were machined on the, on the milling machine and an opening of 20 centimeter diameter was cut into the top plate with a circular cutter. Manufacturing the movement pillars, spacers for gear wheels, bearing bushes, bushes for the support arms of the planets and other components was routine work. For the planets, ivory beads from an, from an antique necklace were used, but for the model for the Science Museum of Tsinghua University, which is currently in the making, these will be substituted by small turned balls from cow, cow bones to avoid collision with the Convention on International Trade in the Endangered Species when exporting the planetarium to China. Here is a cross section a drawing with the different mounted wheels. And here is the finished planetarium, also a cross section. As is clearly as is clearly visible here, any ornamental or any ornamentation typical of the period has been avoided. We do not know anything about details and the outer appearance of the planetarium whatsoever. So the, this model was well confined to technical function in its outer appearance. The functional design is intended to highlight the character of the demonstration model. After all, this was, this was Orso's intention. Overall, care was taken to ensure harmonious proportions of the whole. The final work, the final work step consisted of applying a fine line grind to the work frame. The wheel discs were given a circular grind on the lathe. The parts were then coated with gold colored instrument varnish. And here you can see the finished parts before, before assembly on the, on, the, on the workbench. And finally, the completed model. And I have a small film from the, which has been made by the museum in Meldorf, which I will show you now. Hold on a second. Im Dithmarscher Landesmuseum in Meldorf befindet sich der Nachbau des Ursus Modells von 1586. Is the film mute or is it sound? 2008 erstellte. Es zeigt den Lauf der fünf damals bekannten Planeten um die Sonne, welche sich wiederum um die feststehende Erde bewegt. Something is the tone visible? Uh, is this tone audible? The world zeigt, wie die Sonne um die Erde kreist. Yes, still. Und wie die Planeten still. Yes, um we, can, we can still hear the German comment. The Bewegung wird im Modell durch eine Hand. Better? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes. You can now, you can, you can now, you can now see the moving planets. That is, the planetarium is operated with the crank handle. The, the small the, the small ball mounted above represents the earth surrounded and the big ball the sun of course
Well, this is a fictitious portrait of, of, Ptolemy, of Ptolemy. There's no portrait available, <laughs> actually. Well, this is the well-known diagram from Cellarius, Ptolemaic system. And, Coper and Copernicus system, also well known. That's a didactic film for museum visitors. And here, this is the geoheliocentric mixed system of Ursus. The Earth in the center is surrounded by this, surrounded by the other planets which are revolving around the sun. The horizontal line represents the uh, the equinoxes. And the system in Motion is the Tychonic system. And the portrait by Antonius Eisenhoit of Joost Bürgi, clock and instrument maker of Landgraf Wilhelm IV of Hesse Kassel who executed the model of Ursus. Here's the, the diagram again, the diagram again, which Orzos has published, which is the only source we have regarding technical details of this device.
Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we have some time, well, yeah. more than time to, to discuss. Um, thank you. Thank you also for showing us the, the video because um, I remember that in your previous presentation in SIC meeting, um, uh, I was uh, struck by the how how the the mechanism works, and then I. I I use a few photos I made of your of your slides, and then I understood <laughs> the, the the workings yeah. of the mechanism. But, but uh, only after looking uh, um, uh, carefully to the to the pictures. So we have time for questions. Do uh, uh, as someone. Uh, I ask someone else, please. I see, I see we, we we are not so many, so maybe we could um, uh, uh, put our questions directly uh, with with the sound. But please, please uh, Samuel, you can yeah go ahead. Uh, I I guess there are many questions, so perhaps yeah, if you can just intervene. But I have many questions. I don't want to use all the time. Um, so if you want to be sure not to be uh, forgotten raise your hands or put the queue in the in the chat um so this was absolutely great especially as uh, louis said the film i confess that i had not understood uh, how the the mechanism worked uh, from your first uh, presentation because i uh, i didn't think as hard uh, enough hard about it um <clears throat> And so I, I have uh, I have some question about this, but uh, perhaps we we come back uh, to this later. I would start first by a, a question about the the model by uh, Ursus uh, Antico. Perhaps I wondered, did they uh, in the, all these discussion um, was there uh, was this all about the the way the the different orbs intersect or do not intersect uh and whether the earth is uh, is stand still and the sun turns or is there any uh, question of um uh, eccentricities uh, for instance or um additional epicycles whatever i mean what what was the question of how to deal with the anomalies of the motions uh, addressed anywhere? Is this placed as a role in, in the discussion? Uh, Randy, I don't know exactly. I've, uh, the, I think one of the vigorously discussed topic was the rotation of the Earth or the rotation of the, uh, of the star sphere. And uh, and the inter of also the question of intersection, but this was all the, all this the, all the, all these discussions were directed to, or were uh, immersed in this priority dispute: who proposed first what, and uh, and who had the idea first, and so on. I I don't know exactly whether actually specific details of. Uh, of uh, of planet of uh, celestial mechanics were also uh, debated. I haven't researched this yet. I I don't know, but uh, it is well. It is a, as you know, it is a rather raging discussion over this. But I haven't, at least, I haven't seen uh, details so so far of the things you have mentioned. Uh, Go ahead, Stephen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Gunter. That that was great to see. I was equally in the dark until I saw the video. I'd, I'd seen, I think, one previous online presentation where you had that image, 
And it wasn't until I saw them going round, oh, that's that's what happens. <laughs> um, the penny dropped, as, as we say here. Um, but I, I wanted to, to, to ask you about the moon. So the moon goes around the earth, but the earth hangs above the mechanism. So is it so the, the moon isn't present then? It's just sort of assumed that you would you imagine it going round because mechanically it's not possible to imagine and um to, to cater for that. It would be too small an orbit. Um, um no 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 no. The, no just, just a second. I have to look I have to have to look up the diagram myself now. <laughs> the moon is present. So so where is it then if it's going round the earth and not the sun? Let's see. Hold on a second. I will. I will. I will activate the, uh, the slides again. Hold on. Yeah. Indeed, you have the the moon. The moon itself is only uh, well drawn schematically. Mm. Here, there is no there is no indication that there is any movement of the moon itself. Mm. Okay, in this in this machine. So so it's a uh, it's um left left to the reader's viewer's imagination then as to yeah. how to how yeah. to realize that. Yeah. Okay. If I may, uh, what is also clear that the moon uh, is much, uh, much more. Uh, it's moving more than mm. Uh, mm. than all the others. I mean, it would move twelve times uh, around the Earth in one turn of the sun. Yeah. So was this too much to to be represented? Uh, who knows? But uh, that's. Uh, I I don't know whether I may bounce off this question and ask. It, could, how it, it may have been. Well, it's, I think it could have been achieved. Okay, with but a, with a certain you, gearing, I think this should not be impossible. Should not be impossible. But on the other hand, you talked about the need to, or the need, the 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 the, the fact that it was somehow more manageable to double the tooth numbers. Uh, in two cases, yeah, because the module uh, of the teeth would have been too large, would have become yeah, too yeah, large. The, uh, the 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 spacing of the teeth of the teeth would have been very very large, very large. And, uh, so there would there there would have been uh, would have been a rather well play and what the, in the well in. How, how it's called? Uh, I'm looking for the correct exp expression. Play, play. Um, I think it's play. The mechanism. Meshing of the teeth when the when the when the two when the two wheels are the teeth are meshing, there is far too much play in it because when when you have a, the the bigger wheels of 133 and 156 or something, these are rather fine fine cut wheels. They were, were rather small. With rather small teeth, only small uh, small gaps between. So this is not actually a problem. But uh, assembling these four fifty eight or forty eight, I think something of uh, um, tooth numbers was at this at the same distance of the mechanism. This would well. This would. Uh, result in enormous spacings between the teeth. I don't think this is this uh, could not be this would not be would, would even be impossible in six in the sixteenth century. I think the, uh, yeah, that, that was my question. I mean, some the the the, the ratios uh, that you need for these numbers are kind of determined by the by the astronomy. So you you produce exactly. it yeah. with two numbers, yeah. but then yeah. uh, you can achieve the same ratio with different numbers, of course. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> going up, but um, uh, would would this perhaps uh, pose a problem for 
uh, for producing the motion of the moon. I don't know uh, what, what the ratio would well, be. Well, I haven't calculated it, but well, it's, this depends on the, on the construction, I think. Well, you, the, as I saw that, if I may, the, 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 the main motion, you, you, the, your mechanism imparts to a kind of, to a bar that is mounted uh, on top of the, uh, of the, the central yeah. driving wheel. So there's a, a kind of a metal bar uh, that carries the, the, mobile, uh, the mobile cone of, of, uh, of the tooth of yeah. the wheels. The mobile wheels are carried by a bar and I wanted yeah. to ask you, what is the what is the the, the period of this uh, of this main metal bar going around? Is this the the motion of the sun? This is the motion of the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. And by the way, as you can as you can see here from the cross section, uh, we have of course. A mechanical problem with the moon because you cannot well it would be it's it is not it is impossible to drive the moon from the central axis of course because there are wheels uh, above the center of rotation so that is you cannot mount an axis that is you have to you have to come from from above for, for it may, you have to assemble a, or you have to construct a mechanism above the entire above the planetarium for the moon. There is simply no space to drive it from below. This is of course a problem. <laughs> I, I'm simply I'm so bold just to go on, but please do not hesitate to to to, to come in to the discussion. As we yeah. see this picture now, I want to talk about this. Uh, what what you just what you're showing us. Um, if, if I remember well, in in the the King Milburn and other literature about um, uh, about planetary mechanism, I think they refer to this kind of um, mechanism in the in for orreries etc where you just have two piles of of tooth wheels that are uh, engaging they call it i think double cone mechanism something like that double cone mechanism of course here they're not cones but if you if you make a heliocentric system then the the sizes of the of the tooth uh, of the wheels are kind kind of inverse uh, yeah. On the one side, you have yeah. the larger getting smaller, and on the other side, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. getting larger. So that hence double cone. But this is a kind of it's no, there are no cones. But the idea uh, is somehow very similar. Uh, would you say that this is the the first time in 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 this kind of uh, mechanisms that you you see something like this, or is this? Kind of akin to what we find in uh, the Strasbourg clock. Uh, it is a the well, astrolabe dial. This this uh, mechanism resembles well. It is a different epicyclic epicyclic gearing, and this resembles uh, cons the constructions of uh, wheelworks for astronomical clocks, of course. And. Uh, this well, this can be found in in variations also in in astro in clocks with astrolabe dials, for example. Of course, well, in in some modified way, but the basic construction is the, the or the the basic construction is identical. And of course, Berge was well aware of all these techniques. It's, I think it's a difference to the to the later planet to the later planetariums or, or orreries, where if central movement is well uh, transmitted to various arms carrying uh, carrying different wheels or these cone mechanism you've mentioned. I think this is a this is a rather different layout.
I I will jump in if I may with another question if nobody else is is piping up, mm -hmm. which is just it's a, it's a very small one, Gunter. But mm -hmm. I, I was just very struck by the fact that Ursus is dedicating the diagram of the wheelwork to to John D. Do you, do you have any any thought on why that particular diagram was dedicated to D? I, mean, it's, I have no it's, idea. I have no idea. I have I've looked after this, but I have no idea why Ursus, well, brought D into play here. Mm, mm. I mean, it, it, it's, it's not as if D has any particular association with clockwork or anything yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. So, yeah. yeah, maybe he knew something we don't. I, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I have found nothing yeah. about this connection so far. Okay, thank you. So I, I have another uh, little question that is really uh, about uh, your work as a as a clockmaker here, or as a you you mentioned a Swiss standard for cutting the mm. the teeth. I, I I imagine this is the the kind of the shape of the teeth uh, yeah. we're referring to, uh, which is kind of, kind of of course very very interesting. Uh, there has been much progress since uh, the Renaissance uh, to the 19th and 20th century. Um, uh, did you ever consider whether you would uh, not make teeth in, in the fashion they, they did it in the 16th century? So they did not have this uh, special curve uh, that is used for, uh, for the tooth shape. Uh, this somehow I don't know how they did it. It uh, depended perhaps on 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 the tools they used or um, some some experience. But the shapes seem to be less. Um, I mean, they're less um, calculated. Uh, let's say in a way. Did you ever consider whether you could build this mechanism using a, an old-fashioned uh, tooth shape? Or, uh, I mean, would this be any way uh, foolish to try? Well, it's, uh, well, this depends on the, on the commission. Uh, I've, uh, I've received, uh, my, the commission was to execute a functional model. That is, it should function properly. And uh, of course, it could have been made with, older profiles but um, the well the difference is not very great it can be it's this can be uh, noticed by specialists of course specialists will see at once whether this is a modern gearing or a gearing from the 16th century but uh, for well for a museum visitor this has no well additional value and if or you cannot get insights from from this difference there so i think it was correct to to use modern profiles there for this functional model yeah you mean this was a model it that could be made of course we've i've you have simply made you have simply uh, you have to make fly cutters yourself this is not this is not impossible but uh, well it's much much more work and uh, resulting in less satisfactory function <laughs> so we have another question please david ask about Yes, yes, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry I, I missed the beginning of, of your seminar. Mm -hmm. I, I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, the first one is, uh, I was not familiar with uh, Jost Brugge uh, as a clockmaker. Uh, I, I know him as a mathematician, you know, in the Ursus and Tycho and Kepler controversy, uh, but I was not aware that he was actually involved in, in mechanical devices. Um, so is that something that is well known? I'm sorry for my ignorance. 
Yes, it is. It is quite well known, at least uh, at least among history uh, historians of horror horology. Bergy invented the crossbeat escapement and the remontoir in, in his in his clocks, and uh, many well, many many details will be uh, shown or, or publicly displayed in harvest in September this year. Uh, in St. Gallen, a uh, special exhibition on the life and work of Jos Bergi okay. will be opened. And we are currently preparing a catalogue and, and, uh, in which Bergi's activities as a mathematician, his work in astronomy and his activities as a clock instrument maker will be described and researched in detail. Okay, excellent. Uh, the second question is a bit along the, the lines of Samuel. Um, if you want to reproduce the ratios of the synodic periods, you may need to have perhaps a, a larger number of teeth in, in the gears. And so my question is, has to do with a mechanical way of actually dividing the circle into an even number of, of teeth. So perhaps with an even number is easy, but with an odd number is a bit more complex. So what sort of, of ways they had at the time of dividing the circle into this um, odd number of teeth? Uh, these the, the producing these uneven divisions was a very difficult process and only a pair of, uh, only compasses and uh, uh, how it's called, and a table of chords. Mm -hmm. Could be used, uh, could be employed for this. There were no mechanical devices whatsoever. The well, having a division engine at hand, like Jesse Ramson in the 18th century, was not was unthinkable at this time. So this was an extremely arduous and complicated process. But we, we do know the recipes that they follow for that. We have only well. We have only some. In there's a there's a book by uh, Alan Chapman on dividing the, yes. dividing the circle, and uh, Chapman describes the methods, the geometrical methods of using a compass and uh, call, uh, the table of chords to 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 divide a circle manually. There are some well. There are some ways or some traditions can be reconstructed, but I've tested, I've tried this myself. This is very, very, very difficult, and you have to well repeat the process many, many times to achieve a to to receive a to to receive a rather well appropriate result. Uh, just on this topic, Günther, uh, it's really on the same. So, David, I don't want to interrupt. Uh, the, the, um, when you say that the same process has to be repeated and repeated, are you referring uh, to the uh, the approach where you use a, a strip uh, that you divide and then uh, enroll it? You wrap it on a on your on your circle um no i'm get, uh, to get i'm the referring to to use, you, to use uh, the diameter of the of the circle to uh, to try uh, if i remember correctly to trisect the circumference and then to to half the well to halbia to half the and then halving the distance and so on and, and then arriving to Smaller and smaller parts of of, of of division of the of division. Okay, I see. No, then then this was another idea once a couple of years ago. Andreas Holfert, uh, you might remember him, yeah, yeah. Uh, the former uh, chief curator in Dresden. Uh, he described to me a method that he could imagine. Of course, there's no historical sources for this, but he described to me how he would would have done this uh, if he were someone in the in the 16th century and uh, it, it sounded quite um, 
uh, quite ingenious. Of course, we we will have to to look for for sources for this. But uh, in in short, the idea was to start with a with a strip that had the, mm. the division, uh, roll it around uh, a circle, and then. Uh, make a, a first rough division and actually work then with two wheels uh, divided by this and uh, kind of flipping around the other wheel using symmetries and kind of making disappear progressively the, the, the little errors that there are by, you know, by, by combining the two wheels yeah. uh, in several positions. So to smooth out all the... Uh, the errors along the like to get the most regular uh, uh, divisions so might be the case. Good. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, we do not. Well, we do know next to nothing about the technical details of dividing. Well, such well odd numbers. Yeah. And by the way, the these divisions are really, really accurate. As you know, you know Michael. You will know Michael Corey and Carsten Gauke, who have taken measurements from the Baldwin clocks and uh, examined the accuracy of divisions. This is quite astonishing and fascinating. So, can you remind us again on the dates for the exhibition in St. Gallen? Yes. Um, the exhibition will be opened on, well, let's see, on September 15th of this year. Okay. But I think you will you will hear details via Ricci or L or Hestro L. Okay. This will be announced. But thank course. you so much. Uh, it's a wonderful way of um, of um, uh, concluding our our session today with uh, with this announcement of the this, uh, seemingly uh, fascinating exhibition in St. Gallen. So thank you again. You're and, welcome. Uh, we hope to see you um, in our next uh, uh, um, in our next uh, seminar that will be uh, announced very shortly. And um, so hope to see you again and thank you for your participation. Thank yeah, you. thank you for your attention. Uh, uh, David, you have a question? Is a, you have a brief question? I was, I was just just uh, uploading. Ah, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.